Happy launch day! Beyblade X is now officially released in Japan, and we should all be receiving our new bays in the post shortly, provided you pre-ordered like I did. With all the excitement brewing around this new generation, I thought it was high time I took a crack at breaking down Beyblade X's new battle system, gimmicks, and strategies. But, before we get into the lowdown, if you haven't subscribed and end up enjoying this video, I highly recommend you do so, especially with bell notifications on, to make sure you stay up to date with my <coughs> very regular and consistent upload schedule. Anyhow, that's enough with the formalities. Let's take a look at what's so special about Beyblade X. Right out of the gate, I'm going to tell you about the most immediately recognisable new addition to Beyblade, the stadium. I touched on it before, but this new stadium design adds a significant level of depth to uncover. Long gone are the days of the BB-10s, the burst standard and DB type. The Beyblade X stadium is home to a rail, which links up to the gear teeth on the lower portion of the Beyblade, the bit, allowing them to perform what is called an Extreme Dash. No, not that one. The Extreme Dash, as the name implies, gives the bay a massive burst of speed as it rides the rail directly into the centre, seemingly giving attack types a massive power advantage. However, this rail could be used by stamina types for more evasive manoeuvres, and allowing more recoil-heavy defence types to be able to actually use their weight for more than shrugging off hits. This rail leads into the next change with the stadium, the Stadium Out Pockets. For most of Beyblade history, points were typically earned either by a knockout or spin-out finish. That is, until Burst came along. Now, Beyblade X is changing that format again, changing the amount of pockets from 3 to 5. There are four pockets in the corners of the stadium to knock your opponent into. However, the two beside the larger knockout area appears to be more prominent. These four corners are called the Overzone, which will award two points if you can knock your opponent into them. The largest pocket opposite the end of the rail is called the Extreme Zone, and by knocking your opponent into it, will award you a three point. But, hold on a second. Aren't all Beyblade matches determined by the first to three points? Not anymore. In Beyblade X, matches go to four points, with the remaining ways to score points being two points for a burst finish and one for a spin-out finish. In my opinion, I can understand why they did this. They want to draw attention to their main selling gimmick. Beyblade is a product, after all. That said, I feel like having matches to be four points and awarding only one point for a spin-out finish really puts stamina, and to a slightly lesser extent, defence types at a disadvantage, especially when you take into consideration their burst resistance at the moment. But we'll circle back to that later. I feel like the stadium puts a massive emphasis on launch technique, in particular to how much power you put into your launch. If you're in for the long haul and don't want to use up all your stamina off the bat, you'll have to soft launch and avoid the rail, and vice versa if you need to rely on that rail for extra impact. How what we currently know about launch techniques holds up, I have yet to test for myself. Though, you can assume a flat, hard launch would be what you need to be able to use the full force of the rail, since that essentially gives attack types aimbot. For a stamina type, you would probably want to perform a banking launch, sacrificing some stamina and some stability for more mobility to avoid taking the hit. Speaking of launchers, they've changed too. Beyblade launchers have always had two prongs to hold the bay in place. Now they have three, due to the change in design, which should allow it to get a better grip of the bay, and prevent the embarrassment of it falling off in a tournament setting. These prongs do make me wonder though, just how would they make an LR launcher down the line, as it wouldn't be as simple as bursts just changing direction. I believe it would be something like the MFB LR string launcher, with the other direction's prongs just covered up on the opposite side. Speaking of the change in bay design, let's talk about the bays themselves. As you know, Beyblade X bays are composed of three parts, the blade, the ratchet, and the bit. So far, we know about eight blades, four ratchets, and six bits. The blade is your bay's primary mode of contact to other bays. The ratchet partially determines the height of your bay, as does the bit, and when hit, causes bursts. And the bit is the main point of contact to the stadium, determining performance, and also determines your bay's burst resistance. First, the blades. Drowned Sword is your standard attack type blade, appearing to take inspiration from the Valkyrie line of bays from Burst. It has three large contact points, with good potential for smash attack. Drowned Sword would pair very well with any flat bit with high burst resistance to maintain its speed and manage the recoil from its own attacks. For its ratchet, you would want something in the low to mid range, depending if you want to go for knockouts or bursts. Hell's Scythe is a balance type blade, with 
I believe two main contact points, but it could easily be four. It's a bit hard to tell without seeing it in person, which would also mainly be used for smash attack, though to a lesser extent than Dran Sword. The blade is also a lot more smooth around the edges, giving it better defense and stamina retention, which is to be expected of a balanced type blade. Because of this, I think Hell Scythe could fit in a variety of different combos, though whether or not it can carve out its own niche has yet to be seen. Wizard Arrow is Beyblade X's foremost stamina type blade, taking loose inspiration from the pre-hybrid Sagittario wheel. It has minimal contact points and two smooth blades either side for deflecting attacks. From the pictures we've seen, it appears to have good outward weight distribution from the concentration of metal to the outer perimeter of the blade. I believe a blade like this would excel from having extra height and a bit with low surface area for stamina retention. Night Shield, what used to be my favourite of the new designs, is a defence type blade with three gaps in the outer part of the blade to give it better inward weight distribution and boost its knockout defence. From what I've seen, it doesn't have the best potential to counterattack, so I think it would best pair with parts that purely boost its defence, such as a bit with high burst resistance and a ratchet with a low number of contact points. Cobalt Drake is the most mysterious of the new bay. We haven't had much of a chance to see it in action, and won't even be able to buy it through traditional means, for now. It has four prominent contact points, and has clear inspiration from Dragoon of the Plastic Generation. Though, I would doubt you would see it used much due to its rarity, and having a painted blade, its owner probably wouldn't want to chip. Next is an interesting case. Dranzer Spiral is a remake of a Plastic Generation Beyblade, which, one can hope, would perform similarly to the original. It has two metal contact points on either side, in addition to the plastic section above it. We haven't seen much of it in action, though I would assume it would be best in a low height attack combo, similar to... Shark Edge is an attack type Beyblade with two contact points either side, which I assume have potential for upper attack. At the time of recording, this is technically considered a leak, along with the next blade I'm about to mention. So we have yet to see it in any official capacity, but I believe it would benefit from having a low height and high friction bit. And the final blade, Night Lance, my new favourite of the blades. Very similar to Night Shield, Night Lance forgoes the gaps in its blade, in favour of having contact points to counterattack. A bit with high burst resistance and moderate surface area would not go amiss in a combo for this blade, retaining stamina and being able to tank the recoil of its own counterattacks. Now, that was a lot of information. Luckily, there is a fair bit less to talk about with the ratchets. There are four ratchets we know of so far. 360, 380, 460, and 480. The first number is how many contact points the ratchet has. The second is its height. In my mind, you will want the amount of contact points to be as low as possible, as those being hit will lead to your bay being burst. As for the height, typically, you will want an attack type to be low down to be able to hit under your opponent's blade and either launch them or burst them. For stamina types, you'll want to be higher up, as it increases your overall stamina. As for the bits, there are six we know of in total. First is flat. This is your standard attack type bit. Flat tip means more surface area, means more friction, means a higher speed to attack with. The flat tip has higher burst resistance to deal with the recoil of its own attack. Tapered is not entirely flat, nor entirely rounded. It's a balance type tip you can change the performance of with your launch technique. Think Unite from Beyblade Burst, or Coding Spike from MFB. It also boasts a similar burst resistance to flat. Ball is a solid defensive tip, with a low surface area to conserve stamina, but not easily tipped over due to its rounded shape. Its downfall, however, is its burst resistance, having lower than the previous two. Needle, similar to Ball, has unfortunately low burst resistance, but a very low surface area to maximize stamina retention. A strategy that could be used with Needle is launching it at an angle to avoid staying in the center of the stadium and being vulnerable to an extreme finish from attack types. There are another two bits in the previously mentioned four, however, they are the same bits with a height difference, those being low flat and high needle. With all those parts in mind, a combo I would really like to try out would be Night Lance 360 Tapered. I think the bit would really complement the blade with its high burst resistance and potential to counterattack while the 360 Ratchet would make it harder for most other blades to reach underneath Night Lance, while also giving it better weight distribution with its contact points, lining up with the larger metal parts of the blade. To sum up my thoughts, 
I think Beyblade X can only be an improvement on what came before it. And I'm excited to see what new parts they can come up with, and how the meta takes shape. A lot of what I said in this video is speculation, so apologies if it later becomes outdated. As the new parts are released, I will hopefully be releasing reviews on the new boosters. Anyway, <coughs> that's it from me. Melgo signing off. Peace.